Right, what is going on everybody? Welcome to another uh, video series. This is going to be a series about, well, this right here. Um, so after playing with the Raspberry Pi car for a while, I started to get the bite for something else. Okay, So I've always kind of been pretty impressed with uh, quadcopters, especially the autonomous quadcopters. And so my idea was to build a quadcopter and put something like a Raspberry Pi on there and control the quadcopter via the Raspberry Pi and eventually move into complete autonomy. Um, so with the car, one of the things that I've learned with the Raspberry Pi is it's a great little device, but it's not very powerful. And so with the quadcopter, while the Raspberry Pi could indeed control all four of these uh, motors, probably would need at least two Raspberry Pis uh, to make this fully functional because of the processing speed of a Raspberry Pi, as well as you know the just basically the time it takes for it to think, send messages, and just be powered enough to do that. So um, right now, what's on here is actually this KK board, and that's all that's required to fly this. So the kit I bought is this five, I think it's like X525 or 525X or something like that, and I got it from Amazon. But you can buy this kit from like all sorts of um, places. I got it on Amazon because I had an Amazon gift card, so. Um, that's why I got it there. So the kit was actually pretty nice. Um, as far as supplies are concerned, putting together the kit was a massive pain in the butt because, you know, just visually putting it together is no problem. Setting up the KK board and calibrating the ESCs to work with your controller is uh, just, I don't even know. I don't know why it's so difficult, but there's no like clear instructions anywhere. And um, depending on what you've got because the ESCs are different, right? So there's a brand of ESC and each ESC might be calibrated differently. Um, then you've got the KK board uh, that's on here. Now everyone says if you look it up, go to kkmulticopter.com. Well, good luck with that. That website doesn't exist anymore. So <laughs> getting this all set up was kind of tricky and eventually it might not even be uh, there might not even be a point to using this because uh, my end goal is to actually use a ra something like a Raspberry Pi. Now that brings me to my next thing is not too long ago I was searching for Raspberry Pi um, supercomputer just to see where I ranked in searches and I came across this article about um, this Tegra K1 and how it was competing with the Raspberry Pi. I don't really think that's the case but I had never heard of the Tegra K1. So I started reading into that, and then I found that there was a you know contest at the time. You could enter a proposal about what you would do with your Tegra K1, um, and they would send you one. And so I entered that, and that they are uh, sending me one right now. So uh, that is probably what will find its way right on here is uh, a Tegra K1 instead of a Raspberry Pi. It's a lot more powerful, and actually, it's not just a Tegra K1. It's a it's the Jetson Tegra K1 dev kit. So. It's not just that processor, it's basically like a raspberry, a super strong Raspberry Pi. <laughs> so I'm really excited to play with that. Uh, I think that'll handle this really well. But this also, um, from what I've seen of the motors, now you'll probably, I guess you can't really tell. I do, oh wait, right, let's see, yeah, you can see this one. Um, I've got propellers on some of these. Now a lot of people might be like, oh, you shouldn't have propellers on there uh, if you're developing or whatever, and you shouldn't. Uh, what I ended up doing and check like a lot of the stuff with the propellers was you just cut out like a circle on a piece of paper you put the arrow that you expect uh, forward to be for the motor and you plop that th onto the uh, motor shaft here and that's what you use to develop now this is my main complaint with the kit is not only were the instructions horrendous um, the parts were some parts you got lots of extras some parts you you got the exact number um, so this was kind of problematic because, and then some of you are missing parts, so you had to kind of improvise with the extra parts that you got, but it got together for the most part, except for right here. I don't have a propeller on here because as after I was done developing, I started putting my propellers on. I'm all excited. I'm going to fly this thing. And it turns out these little, uh, one of these propeller mounts, uh, the way they work is they're basically a clamp that clamps onto the propeller at the same time it clamps onto the motor shaft and it screws on right here and so as it pushes these two pieces together this is also a clamp down here I don't know what the official term is um, but as this piece slides down on it, it it closes tighter so as you screw this on this closes tighter and this closes tighter and that's what holds on the propeller um, 
one of them was it wasn't that it wasn't stripped it was that it was completely stripped and so it would not screw so I had to order another one hopefully I got the right one um, but I'm still waiting on that so massive bummer very annoying to get to that point uh, after building this entire thing finally calibrating this and getting it to work this is another thing you might not need a KK board you also might not need a controller uh, but I did event I did actually buy one I figure it might actually be a good thing to have a controller that way you have some sort of fail safe that you could fall back on and have a controller carry precedence over um, any input that is coming from the board so got a phone call anyway um, so that's that obviously these will eventually be uh, better secured and all of that as well but um, didn't quite get that far so anyway that's the kit that I got pretty happy with it It was really cheap like 130 bucks for basically everything you see here the only thing extra that you would have to buy is a battery it doesn't come with a battery because they assume most people have their own battery as they build up uh, so there's no battery that came with it I'm trying to think of what else didn't come with it you also you had to do all your soldering yourself so you would need like a soldering gun and stuff and also um, some sort of charger for the battery this is a balancing charger also horrible instructions that came with it luckily some somebody made a video for it on YouTube how to use this and super easy if you just follow the YouTube video so that's that um, this is actually my box that is my dev box uh, what I've done here is before I suggest that anybody take off a quadcopter uh, that they just built it would be wise that you have some sort of control and so mine I guess you can't really see but I made you know kind of like a uh, what do you call these things I forget what what, you, what the official term, the childhood term of that is. But anyway, so I use that to hold it in place. There's also a uh, cord over here attached to a zip tie that's attached to the, um, the actual frame itself as well for kind of a fallback just in case those uh, strips fail. So this way, it, its max height is this high, right? And I would be able to see it turn and all of that if it uh, makes sure everything works before we go ahead and set this off because it is important to understand that these propellers will just slice your skin right open so <laughs> it's not uh, something you want flying around before you feel like you're in at least a little bit of control so <laughs> anyway so that's that uh, again I'm pretty happy with it I think for the money uh, it's a good kit to have I'm really excited to play with it I'm really bummed out about this but still for the money uh, it's pretty darn good so the controller too um, that was another thing that because you have to you don't have to bind the controller to your receiver because the receiver comes with the controller and eventually if you have like a Raspberry Pi on board or an Arduino or what I'm gonna probably put on here is a Taker K1 dev kit whatever you have on there that might be your controlling but I expect that most people would want to have a controller as a failsafe so anyway getting the controller calibrated to the ESC's that calibrate to the mo I don't know it was just really confusing for a while and the pictures that come and the instructions that come have been like photocopied like nine times or something. Um, so it was kind of confusing, but nothing that a bunch of Google searches and trial and error couldn't solve. Um, so if anyone happens to get this and has any questions, I can probably help you out. Uh, as far as, especially when it comes to arming the board, that took me forever to figure out how do I get this thing to actually arm. Um, so that was kind of a pain in the thuckus. But uh, yeah, so anyway. Uh, that's what you guys have to look forward to um, as I develop with this thing. Maybe eventually I'll put out a tutorial on all of it. Not really the most noob-friendly topic, uh, especially moving forward with an autonomous quadcopter. RC car was really easy to do tutorials on because it wasn't too in-depth, whereas this will be very in-depth because you've got gyros and all this kind of stuff. and uh, It needs to react faster than our car did. So <laughs> it's a lot more important because this thing, my only complaint, um, is this thing when it crashes is going to just die probably <laughs> so uh, it's gonna need a lot of repairs if this ever goes down so anyway a lot of um, a lot of coding work will have to go into this but anyway so that's it for now uh, if you guys have any questions or comments feel free to leave them below as always thanks for watching thanks for all the support and subscriptions and until next time